Hey folks, John with Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. So after our little video last night, it occurred to me that uh, it's time to show you how to put it together. Here we go. So after that video last night, guys, and in case you guys missed it, that was on that awesome HDX 68. I'll throw a link up here for you if you missed that one. But in the very beginning of that, we discussed the new upgrade for the HDP 50. This is the speed loader that we designed. If you take a look at that, you can actually see how that is mounted on there. Now, after this video, guys, I got flooded with emails, all these people that wanted these. And as you can see by this little stack here, we started getting them printed up. Each one of these takes about nine hours to print, so there is a little bit of leeway between order time and shipping time, which is why I'm trying to get ahead of this on here. But I wanted to show you guys how this thing works and how it mounts on your weapon. So today what we're going to use is this is a fully modified version of the HDP 50. This is the one that actually fires full power. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount one of the speed loaders to this one and see how it actually does. Now, admittedly, guys, when I designed the speed loader, I had this model in mind. And the reason is because this thing, when your full power gets about 10 shots per CO2 cartridge, and that's it. Now, granted, this will hold six shots and this speed loader will hold six shots but for testing purposes given the fact that we're dealing with the powerful version today we're going to do five and five so you'll get to see what it does though either way so all right in order to load your new speed loader and i want to show stumpy this here what you want to do is you want to remove the cap now guys this is critically important before you do this you do not want to break this cap all right now on the front of the weapon, you've got a Picatinny rail right here. We are going to be attaching to that Picatinny rail. The way we're going to do this, if you look in here, that rail is actually built into the speed loader. So you want to lower this down to the rail and then lower the gun and snap this onto place. Now, once that's on like that, you guys see how that snapped on? Put your weapon on a soft padded surface. Now, you can do this in a couple of ways. Um, this is secure. It's going to hold nice and tight on a nice flat surface like this, guys, and give it a pop on the back. There you go. And once you've hit it and it's gone all the way against up on the trigger guard, you now have this loaded. And, guys, you can give it an extra pop or two if you think it didn't go all the way down. But as you can see, it seats right on there. And, guys, that's not going anywhere ever. Now, it is removable, and in order to remove it, if you want to take it off to change it out or whatever, uh, what I usually do is take a piece of wood and place it right here, and then tap on the piece of wood, shifting the side left to right, and it will come straight off the weapon. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to move to the range, and then we're going to load up some rounds. Now, what we're going to use today are the regular 50 caliber rubber balls, okay? These aren't even the steel core ones, the regular rubber balls because these are the stickiest that you can ever get. Um, so everything else that fires through this thing is going to be smoother. This is the only one that might even be remotely sticky, so why not test the one that's uh, a pain first? Be right back. All right, here we go, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up our loading rail just like we would normally load the weapon. So we've got nothing in here currently, okay? Now, if you guys will recall, looking down in there, you've got a little bit of fibrous, uh, like a thing crossing on the bottom here. That's there intentionally to keep the balls from falling back out should you tilt the weapon down while you're loading it, okay? So, lay, simply put the ball right there and pop it right in and then move on to the next one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to load in five because this is the high power version, four and five. Now, once you've got that in there, a slight shake will lower those into the chamber. That's all you got to do, okay? Now, once you've got these in the chamber, guys, go ahead and press your little rod, and that will load the balls in. Now, there are no more balls in the main system there, okay? And if you look at it closely, you can actually see that all five balls, hopefully this is picking that up, were loaded in there correctly, okay? Now, you're going to take the remaining five, or guys, yes, six, if you're going to load the sixth one, two, three, four, five, and it will hold a sixth one. You guys can see there's plenty of room there. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to screw on our cap. Now, the cap is also PLA, but it's also printed at 100% infill. So just thread that down, and you are now ready to go. 
So let me throw a CO2 cartridge in this, and we'll be right back with you. You know, it's funny, guys. After I did that uh, uh, that video yesterday, the email box literally blew up. Yeah, and I knew it would. I knew it would. This uh, 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 upgrade, we've been looking at doing for a very, very long time. And I'd gone through a couple of uh, other people's designs, and I just didn't like how they were working. There were too many jams. And uh, if you look back on the comments of that last video, you'll see that somebody else had talked about those very jams, as a matter of fact, that they were still having. So my goal was to solve that problem as quickly as I could. Another thing that I think might actually work, and I haven't tested this yet, but even on the sticky ones, you guys saw that a little shake and they popped right in there without a problem. But I think if you were to apply a little baby powder, just a little bit, that would also inspire them to fire out and to, to feed in a whole lot smoother. Honestly, I haven't needed it, though. I just haven't. So, all right, let me grab my groovy glasses. And let's go ahead, and you guys know the drill. We are popped out. Guys, this is the loud one. I'm going to get back behind the camera here. Once again, we're not looking for accuracy. We're just going to fire these five rounds. All right, that's five rounds down. We're going to slide up our loading mechanism. Take it a couple times. And as you guys can see, all the rounds have loaded in. Now we're going to fire the next five just like that and guys since this is modified watch that's it that's it that's all you get is that exact amount of rounds pretty cool huh now on obviously on the unmodified version you guys can uh use this for the six rounds over and over and over and over and over and it'll be just fine um and you usually get about 25 to 30 shots out of the uh, uh the un upgraded version so pretty cool huh all right so Let's step back in here, and I'll tell you a couple more things. Here we go. You know, one thing is crazy, guys. Every time I do uh, anything that has to do with the modded version of this thing, um, it, it, dude, the power output on these is ridiculous. And, you know, by the way, I'm going to link, link uh, Home Defense 24 down here. It's the one that you can get, like the valve tuning kits and the, the extended barrels and all this other stuff for this. Because what I'd like to do is get an extended barrel for this thing and then modify my speed loader to go with the extended barrel and thereby probably adding another 12 rounds to the shots, which I think would be pretty cool too. But now that I've got this design down and the internals are functioning correctly, then it's, it's ready to go. Just remember, same trick, slide it up forward, lean it back, Tilt, shake, 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 and in they go. Now, if you're using metal rounds, guys, honestly, the, uh, like I used aluminum and steel, if you are even in this position and you slide this down and just go like this, brrr, they just link right in. So the sticky ones, you got to shake a little bit, which is why we went with the sticky ones so I could show you that it worked. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So, guys, these are available. I've got them now. Um, I've already got, uh, obviously, a few pre-orders, and the printers are cooking in there. Uh, this will be going out to a customer tomorrow, as a matter of fact. This is the one that we just finished on that. Um, this one is actually unmodded. Oh, which brings me to one other point. If you are going to do the upgrade on the HDP50 in order to get the more power out of it before you install this, do that. And I'll show you why. So the pins to pop out when you're doing the upgrades are one, two, three, four you can't see, five you can't see. This blocks those pins. So do your upgrade first, then put on your speed loader. That's the only way to do it. Otherwise, you're going to have to take this off and do it again. So pretty cool, right? Guys, I know it's a short one, but I wanted to show you how this thing works. And boy, does it ever. I haven't found anything that didn't work perfectly with it. So if you want one, Email will be in the description. Shoot me one. Please be patient, guys. Um, they're going to be running 25 bucks a piece. That's what I'm going to charge for them. And then uh, usually it's maybe 5 bucks, maybe a little less um, for shipping anywhere in the continental U.S. bubble. It's real simple to ship. And they're solid. These are not... They're not like hollow like you would think when you, you know, get 3D prints. They are actually printed 100% infill. So pretty cool. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I know you like these back-to-back -back videos. Don't lie and say you don't. We'll talk to you on the next one. Bye-bye.